having support is huge. Crucial. Yeah. And then, so with that, what sort of, do you guys have universal health care out there in Holland or what is the healthcare system like in general in contrast to here in America? No, we have general health. The healthcare is basically, we all pay in amounts per, per uh, month. Mm -hmm. It's not a very high level amount. It's 160 euros, which is almost the same as a dollar now. And basically every basic need is for free. And that's a very good system. I love that because that way everybody can help have the help they need. And then of course you can have, and you pay a little bit extra and you can have a lot of more extra that they pay you for certain extra help. Okay. Interesting. So, yeah. It's a great system. If I compare that to the United States and I hear my friend saying she's paying like a thousand dollars a month. I'm like, Wait a minute here. <laughs> yep. I'll stay living here. Even though I want to work in the States, I'll stay living here. <laughs> yes. Hold on. I got an eyelash in my eye. I'm trying to get that out. But yeah, it's fascinating. The just differences in healthcare between different places. And I know a lot of people here complain, oh, that's socialism. But you just dispelled that because there are different levels that people who want to have a specialized service can go and have that still. It's not where you're axed out of primary care or of great care. No, you still have the ability to do what you need to fulfill yes. you know, your care needs. But overall, it seems like there's a more value placed on life like supporting moms each month. Um, what is it like with being able to take a break from work? Are both parents able to do that or? They actually changed that now. As a mom, you have all together, you have three months of free time when you're around your getting, giving birth and you decide when you start with those three, three or four months, it's now. And as that, it was only like a few days, but nowadays they have that, they can have like also in a sort of eternal leave, they call it like that, mm -hmm. like for a parent leave, the working, that they have so many days. Uh, and I think it's pretty much now, they get all together, I think half a year, and they can do like use a little three years. And they decide themselves how they divide those days. So they can have parental leave, that's how you call it. So yes, that's actually a pretty good system. It's not as good as in Norway, but okay, we are, I'm already happy with what we have here. Nice. Uh, when I got my kiss, dad only got four days and that was it. Wow. Yep. Interesting. Okay. And so coming from those questions, what... When burnout hit you, what were the symptoms that you experienced personally from burnout? Oh, I don't even want to, basically don't even want to go back there. But yes, I will tell you. <laughs> I was tired and tired. I hardly could sleep. By that time, my kids started sleeping, but then I couldn't sleep no more. My head was like spinning all the time. The thoughts and also about thoughts about you so negative thoughts and also i'm not worth it and who am i to be here and i can't do anything and but i also had a lot of small physical problems like stomach aches my bowels i my, my ears were ringing a lot uh, i had this twitch in my all these little complaints but then the focus concentration it was so hard and most of all, and that's why I really knew I need to do something, my, my short fuse, I don't know if you call it like that too, it's like very quick, blam, exploding. I had to work on that, especially with a son having his tantrums and his, I had to stay calm. I really had to stay calm. And that went harder and harder to do. And then, of course, after I would explode, I would feel so guilty. And that adds up even to all the symptoms. If you feel all this guilt yourself that, oh, I'm not a good mom and I can't even handle a kid. And yeah, it was quite broad. And I just stayed more and more home because I just couldn't handle it no more. Wow. I get to 
just acknowledge you right now because even with all of that, with the burnout, the negative thoughts, even the occasional explosions, it's you still stood up for yourself amid others also feeding into that. What Was there anything else that really within you or that you're aware of that kind of supported and guided you to stick to your intuition? Was it just, I'm going to latch on to any piece of goodness that's in this space right now? Or what else supported you in all of that? I think like that lady from the kinesiology, people like that, because I was searching for my kids in the alternative, an alternative scene sounds so weird. And that's where I got also some rec- recognition from for what I was doing. And I just hooked onto that. And every time, they, like the school, how many times they say, no, you're wrong, and you shouldn't this, and you shouldn't that. And, and then my ex, like even going, oh, I'm going to uh, sue you for things. I'm going to go to the judge. And because I was going to the alternative medicine, which he didn't want me to do. And yeah, the, the small support from the, the few people. Now, one friend, she was actually... Uh, Her job was working with kids and parenting. And that was one of my other lifelines. It was like, come guy, I need your help. I'm doing a bad job as a mom again. And she's, no, Karna, tell me the problem. No, you're doing a great job. (laughs) So she was my backup as well. So again, the support from other people that made me stay okay with my intuition and my thoughts. Because when you get, the more you get stressed, the more you start doubting yourself. So that's something Amy just told me, call them, you need help. Yeah, somehow. I, but maybe also because I had my background as a therapist. So somehow I knew, because I know that, oh gosh, if that touches me again, when I heard that I was going to divorce, 